Studying the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation is like a timeline of the end time, I mean the very end. We're not in the book of Revelation right now. We're not experiencing the events of the book of Revelation only up to chapters 1 through 5. And that's where we are right now. We're in this precious time that we're going to talk about. But let me read Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2, verse 18. We've studied four or three out of the, of the seven churches. But let's look at this. Revelation 2, 18. And to the angel of the church at Thyatira write these things, says the Son of God, who has eyes like a flame of fire and his feet like fine brass. We see that in chapter 1. I know your works, your love, your service, your faith. I know your faith. Somebody say amen. We've been studying faith. And your patience. And as, far, as for your works, the last are more than the first. How many want to do greater works in your older age? You want to start now, wherever you are, but you want to do more. You'd want to do more. Somebody say amen. Nevertheless, he says... The Lord is saying this. I have a few things against you. Oh, why? All right. It's just so sad. But the Lord will rebuke us to our face, and I'm thankful for that. Because you allow that woman, Jezebel, that is a Jezebel spirit. That is a spirit of immorality, a spirit that causes people to sink into immorality and an immoral life who calls herself a prophetess. In this case, it was a real person, but Jezebel is a person of the Old Testament. It's a spirit. Let me understand that. To teach and seduce, here it is. This is what it means. My servants to commit sexual immorality and to eat things sacrificed to idols. And I gave her time, listen to this. I gave her time to repent of her sexual immorality, and she did not. So the Lord is gracious. He is always redeeming things. This, this book of Revelation is a book of the judgments of God and then the wrath of God. But his, his judgments are always redemptive, always redemptive. He's always looking for people to repent. Indeed, I will, listen to this, this is pretty powerful. Indeed, I will cast her into a sickbed and those who commit adultery with her into great tribulation unless they repent of their deeds. In other words, you reap what you sow. There's going, to be a, there's going to be a recompense for the error. And guess what? Judgment begins. God's judgment begins in the house, in God's house. Before he judges the world, he's visiting the churches. And we've talked about that. It's very important. And I will give to each of you according to your works. Well, let's go back. Um, I will, okay. I will kill her children, it says. Uh, with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he who searches the minds and the hearts. That sounds pretty harsh. But he's given her time to repent. She is, this spirit is, is destroying the church. It is destroying what Jesus is building. And how many know you don't want to be on the opposite side of what Jesus is doing? Somebody say amen. And the enemy wants to destroy the church. That's what he does. And he sends people. He sends seducing spirits. He sends demonic, driven, inspired, animated people who want to destroy the Lord's work. And so he goes on, and I will, I will give to each of you according. I'm the one who searches the minds and the hearts, he says. And I will give each, of, each one of you according to your works. Now, to you I say, and to the rest in Thyatira, as many as do not have this doctrine, he's referring to, to the Jezebel doctrine, that which allows sexual immorality and all kinds of, who knows, bestiality, who knows, homosexuality. It's all kind of a part of all of that, that thing, that spirit. If you don't have this doctrine, how many know that that's really pervasive in the church today? This is, this is not just back then. This is now. We are seeing this being fulfilled in our day. But those of you who do not have this doctrine, who have not known the depths of Satan, this is from Satan himself. As they say, I will put 
on you no other burden. But this is where I want to concentrate tonight. Because this is such an important truth for us to understand. Concerning our, our calling as the church, as believers. He says, but hold fast what you have until I come. In other words, pull in the truth, truths, hold fast to the reality of my presence in your midst, my doctrine, my teaching, who I am, and, and hold true to your salvation and what you've experienced and what you know. And he who overcomes and keeps my works, it's just not his words, but his works until the end to him. Listen to this. This is so important. I will give power over the nations. Let me say it again. I'll just say it again. I'd love to say it. In other words, if you're overcoming right now, and you are, you're here on a Wednesday night. Hallelujah. You are overcoming. You know, I don't feel like an over, you're an overcomer. Don't, don't say that you're not an overcomer when Jesus calls you an overcomer. In other words, don't call unclean what Jesus has called clean. Somebody say amen. Quit calling yourself unclean by saying things about yourself that Jesus doesn't say about you. Hey, somebody, are you there? All right. So you are overcoming. Amen. But I love this. I will give power over the nation to the one that's overcoming. So what does that mean? Oh, that's in the sweet by and by, Pastor. That's in the millennium. Well, no. That's just not there. Somebody say, I mean, we know it's going to happen there. That's happening right now. That is happening right this very minute. How do you think the gospel gets spread throughout the world without reigning and ruling and learning how to reign and rule with Christ? I'm going to explain. I will give him power over the nations. Listen to this. And he shall rule them. That is, you and I, with Jesus, shall rule them with a rod of iron. They shall be dashed to pieces like potter's vessels. Those ones who oppose the gospel, those nations, those leaders that oppose the gospel coming in, if, if Christians would rise up and do battle, spiritual battle, then God would bring the victory and dash them like, a, like vessels of a potter. Somebody say amen. Now let me read it all together. I will give him give I will give power give him power over the nations and he shall rule them with a rod of iron this is a prophecy and they shall dash them to pieces like a, like the potter's vessel as I also have received from my father. Somebody say amen. So Jesus is saying I'm giving you a rod of authority. And that rod of authority has so much authority that you can change nations with me. Somebody say amen. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Not only can you change your own heart, which is where it begins. You know, how can, how can I rule with Jesus nations? How can I change nations if I, can't, if I can't even get my mind right? Somebody say amen. So get your mind right. Renew your mind. Stay in the spirit. Just, you know, you know what I'm saying. Be strong. But I love this. See, once you learn the basic principles of just loving Jesus, following him, being a true disciple, being faithful, honoring him, living for him, building his church, being the church, however we want to say it, then and, and doing his will, then we get into this powerful stuff of bringing his name and his gospel to the nations, even to those nations that oppose the will of God. Let me read it again. Him I will give power over the nations. He shall rule them with a rod of iron. They shall dash, they shall be dashed to pieces like the potter's vessel, as I also have received from my father, and I will give him the morning star. And he he who has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is says is saying to the churches father thank you for your word we receive your word god it, it's it's incredible it's it's just powerful and help us to understand it lord many people are not taught what i'm about to teach the people tonight but i'm so thankful that lord we can see great change in our nation because we love our nation pray for our nation 
and pray for our leaders, God, that we, are, we can see wonderful things begin to happen when we take the authority that you've given us. And those of us who pray for other nations, Lord, and we thank you that you're making changes there, bringing the gospel. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray, amen. And everybody said amen. Which reminds me, this is our, our 2022 Missions uh, Faith Promise card. This is what you're promising to give by faith. And I say by faith because sometimes you may not have what you want to give. You may have a great uh, you know, idea in mind of what you want to give. But please pray about that. This is over and above the tithe as well. And don't forget about your testimony card. We want to hear from you. We want to know what Jesus is doing, what he has done, since, especially since you've been coming here. Because we just have something in mind to reach our community in 2022 and, and just pull people in and let them know about who Jesus is here. But we right now on God's prophetic timeline, we are in, we are in. Uh, the church age. Everybody say church age. This is the church age. This is what we're reading about in Revelation 2 through 3 and even 4 and 5. You see a lot of what's happening in heaven, but this is where we are right now. Before Revelation 6 through 22 happens, the Great Commission has to take place. And let me, let me read this. At, at Thyatira, we've, we've already studied Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos, but this church at Thyatira had a lot going for it, but it was, there was something creeping into it, something of the enemy that was trying to uh, destroy what God was building. And, and Jesus encourages them to, to cut it off, to cast it out, and continue on and believe him. But, but this, is, this is the real problem, I believe, in our age right now and in this church age. We see so many churches failing, so many ministers, so many, as he says, the angel of the, of the church at Thyatira, that is the messenger, that is the pastor. I know you don't look at me as an angel, but maybe God does. I don't know. But the, but the fact is, is that, that we are the messengers. The, this, this calling of mine has messenger attached to it. And I have to continue to preach to you doctrine, teaching you the word of God, keeping you from the error of the enemy. It is on me to fight off wolves, doctrines that wolves would bring in, things that so easily slip into churches, so easily slip in to the churches. And, and Jesus is so present in the church that he is warning the churches, and it's seven churches because this is a complete church. We are all, listen, he has done everything for us that he's going to do. He's poured out his spirit, contained, given us his word. He has given us his doctrine, given us his name, everything that we need. He has given us leaders. He's given us everything we need. And still we can't, we are just struggling to get things done. Oh, you know, it's like, it's like churches just can't break free. So many are closing a pandemic. Close the churches down. People are just rolling over, playing dead. And look, 2022 is upon us, and God has work to be done. Somebody say amen. We have to get it done. Don't ever give up in this church age. Why? Because there's so much on our, on our side. I mean, let's, let's face it. I mean, we have everything we need to do the work of God and to change our families, change communities, change cities, change regions, and change nations. That's why I'm not giving up on America. I know, I know, I know. I know the argument, but I, God's not done. Somebody say amen. He is not. Can you imagine the world without America? And the Christians and the, and the giving and the, and the powerful prayer. The devil wants to shut it all down in this church age. But he's not going to. God's going to see to it that he doesn't. Revelation 6 through, 10, 6 through 22 has not happened yet. It's going to. That's a very short, brief period of, of history. But we have been given all this time to get the work of the gospel done. The church is the ecclesia. 
It is the reigning, ruling body of believers in the earth. We are the highest governmental gathering in the world. It doesn't matter where two or three are gathered in his name. They're the king of kings and the Lord of lords is, and we have authority. The, re the devil wants you to think, well, if you're not, su you're not success successful, if you don't have a mega church, well, take your mega mouth out of my, out of my hearing. Because, listen, it doesn't matter. Two or three. Come on, somebody. We can move mountains. Hallelujah. So Jesus is trying to teach the church something right here that we don't understand. This great commission is to be fulfilled. And we have to know how to do it. The early church knew how to do it. They took 120, turned them into several thousand. Next thing you know, they're just reaching the nations. Now tell me how that happens. Because they knew how and what to do. They understood it. But we are the reigning, ruling body of believers charged with the great commission. That is going into all the world preaching the gospel. Maybe, maybe for you, it's just going to your spouse and saying, honey, I love you. I want you to be saved. I want you to know Jesus. He is my best friend. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you how. You don't have to get religious. You'll just fall in love with Jesus. How many understand? Does that make sense? And then you just start branching out. Oh, I can do this. Or just praying for your spouse when they're sick, seeing God break things off of them. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, honey. Somebody say amen. Jesus does have power to heal. But Matthew 28 tells us this, 18, verse 18, and Jesus came and spoke to them saying, all authority, say that with me. All authority has been given to me in where? In heaven and in earth. So everybody say heaven and earth. Heavenlies as well, in, in the heaven of heavens, in the heavenlies, that is in the cosmos, in the atmosphere, uh, and in the earth, the terrestrial world. I'm going to talk about that here in a moment. And he says, because all authority has been given to me in heaven and in earth, you go. So we are the ones who carry the authority of God in the earth. Authority to do what? To cast out demons. I mean, principalities that raise up these evil leaders. Jesus says that. Baptizing them, he used that same word, nations. In Revelation chapter 2, verse 26 and 27. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teaching them to observe all things that I've command you. And lo, I am with you. I will give you the morning star. I will be with you always even to the end of the age. Amen. So Jesus gives us a glimpse into how to make disciples of all nations in his message to the church at Thyatira. Now, how many are familiar with the, with the teaching of the seven mountains of cultural influence? How many? All right. So if you're not, um, the seven mountains of cultural influence are just big influential um, uh, mediums in our in nations that basically disciple whoever is at the top whoever has the most influence at the top they disciple people for instance government disciples people how many understand that the government is one of the mountains education one of the mountain mountains teachers uh, that love Jesus and teach the truth thank God for them somebody say amen but there's a lot of garbage that's entering into the education mountain of influence that's discipling nations we're seeing discipling our nation young people rising up you know changing uh, christians minds even on abortion on gay marriage i mean young people i mean it's crazy it's how much influence these people at the top of the mountain professors politicians arts and entertainment how powerful is the mountain of arts and entertainment? I mean, it's just influence, influence. They've tried to change what the family mountain, I mean, no family is a big influence, but they're, uh, you know, the enemy's trying to break up the family, break up, you know, it, oh, oh, you can have two dads, you can have two moms. Well, that's a lie from the pit of hell, and that is not from God. 
you know, I mean, on and on. Um, finance business is a mountain big, and you know, f money is a big influence, and people at the top influence the people, the mo the populace in the in the mountains. On and on we can go. But and media, me, oh, media, yeah, that's a seven man. The media is the biggest one. Yeah, we don't want to one of the biggest that influence. But that's. I don't want to talk about that altogether. You can go and you can look that up and you can read more on it. But what I want to share with you is in this church age, we have to understand our authority. Revelation 2.26 tells us this. He who overcomes and keeps my works until the end, to him I will give power over the nations. He shall rule them with a rod of iron. They shall be dashed to pieces like a potter's vessel, as I also have received from my Father. Does Jesus not have this rod of iron right now? Yes, he does. This is a revelation from Psalm chapter 2. Let me read it in Psalm chapter 2 of Jesus. You can read it. Why did the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? Psalm, Psalm 2 verse 1. But let's jump down to 6. It says, Yet I have set my king, the father is speaking here to the son, I have set my king on my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree. The Lord has said to me, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. And how is he going to inherit them? And how is he going to possess them? Through his church. Because he can't just be a dictator. He's not a dictator. He's a loving God. He has to honor the will of mankind. Each individual has a will. God created you this way. You have to choose him. He's not going to make you choose him. He's going to make it hard not to choose him. Somebody say amen through conviction. And the love and the things that you feel and the desire for your creator and all of that. But how is he going to inherit them? Through us being obedient in building churches, expanding the kingdom, reaching the lost people that we love, people at work, wherever we are, whatever we're doing, we're always thinking about the harvest and thinking about the nation and our nation. Why wouldn't we think about our nation? Why wouldn't we pray that God would reap a harvest in our nation? So now... According to Revelation 2, 26 through 27, his church carries the same authority, the rod of authority to crush principalities and transform nations. Does that make sense? How many are lost already? All right, my dad's lost. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know, I'm just teasing. So what does that mean? So let's think of it this way. How did this early church go into the nations? They understood that the gospel had power. They understood that the Holy Spirit was with them. They understood that angelic hosts were with them and that wherever they went, there would be battle in the heavenlies over these nations, over these cities where they would go. They understood the spiritual warfare over these cities and over the... That's why there was so much trauma that they experienced. Because these, these people that were demonized and these nations, these cities that were ruled by these demon spirits, when, when they heard the gospel, they knew they had to stop it. And so the power of God would come upon these men and people would be healed, demons would be driven out. And the next thing you know, the gospel is heard. People are getting saved. The church is being established. And the devil's saying, what just happened? And here we are thousands of years later. And here we sit in a church that's proclaiming the same gospel. How does that happen? You have to clear out the principalities and the powers. You have authority to clear out principalities and powers over your home, over your family, over your neighborhood. Oh, you know, when you, do, when you do street prayer, when you walk the streets and you do, uh, do uh, prayer walks, find principalities and powers. Uh, Curtis was telling us a, uh, a story. We were talking a little bit about this in staff today about a man. Who, where was he? He was over in Scotland, and he was doing a prayer walk in Scotland. What city was it? Uh, who wants uh, whatever city or town. And he was just doing a prayer walk. 
And he was just praying, just binding, breaking, asking God, to, I'm sure, just to bring revival in that, that city or that town. And all of a sudden, what appeared to him was a, gi- a giant principality with like a, like a bull face and horns. I mean, as big as a building. And so, <laughs> I mean, just looking at him like this. And so what did he do? He had to, he had to remove, you know, he had to remove that principality and power. And you have authority to do that. And I'm going to show you how. So like if you're, you guys are in Middletown, Middletown or Trenton, we're glad to see you, Kim and Cherie, and wherever, whatever town, whatever neighborhood you're in. That's what, that's what I did here in Westchester. Did you know in Westchester there were three other churches that started Pentecostal Assembly of God churches years before we started this church that failed? Now, what was the difference with our church? We understood spiritual warfare, and we did spiritual warfare. We, we bound principalities and powers. Cast them out. And here we are. Somebody say amen. <laughs> Planting churches, breaking chains and taking names. Hallelujah. So how do we do this spiritual warfare? Jesus has given to his church the authority, all authority, mind you, in heaven and in the heavenlies and on the earth to go and bring heaven's transformation to all nations of the earth. If the church just understood this principle, we could get the harvest in very quickly. And what does all authority mean? What does that mean? What does it look like to have all authority? Now, there are demonic Ruling, as I said, principalities, evil principalities and powers. The Bible reveals over and over spiritual warfare for the souls of people. It's always about people. Demon spirits that bind people. Remember Jesus? He just, he's just getting out of the boat. He's coming to do ministry. Next thing you know, some demonized man comes jumping out of the tombs, acting crazy. How did... Yeah, and he knew that Jesus was the Son of God. This was a demonized man. Legion was the principality that was bringing fear upon that a whole town. Ten cities he was bringing fear upon. Jesus cast him into swine. The swine, of course, ran into the Sea of Galilee. And so Jesus set that man free and later came back. And there's a revival breaking out. Somebody say amen. See, we understand, we understand the linear Casting out devils, healing the sick, preaching the gospel. We un- and that's good. We need to understand. We need to do that more. But we don't understand the multi-level warfare enough to really do it effectively. Our, our fast is coming. Have a God got them into somebody's life, into ties in the Holy Spirit, making disciples, disciples all seek to deceive and blind and destroy into this. Uh, that this is Ephesians chapter six. I'm talking about the earth, the church age. We have to understand what we're doing here. We got to know our purpose. Somebody say Amen. The reason why I can keep joy is because I keep the devil under my feet or cast him back where he needs to go. Somebody say Amen. Ephesians six ten says this. Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of who. The devil, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Your battle is not with people. They're battling the devil. That's why they're so cantankerous. But against principalities, against who? You're wrestling, whether you know it or not, against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness. Hosts. Of wicked spirits in where? The heavenlies, the cosmos above us. Got it? I don't like that. That scares. Don't be afraid. Somebody say amen. You wear the armor of God, the glory of God. I had somebody come in. We were doing spiritual warfare once one Saturday morning. Oh, you don't have jurisdiction over China. You don't have, how come I don't have jurisdiction? Well, you got to be a part of that country. 
I am a part of that country. I'm reigning and ruling with Christ above the nations. Jesus didn't say every nation, but China. Somebody say, man, he said the nations. People, th- people uh, they, they overthink things. Stand therefore having, having girded your waist with truth. Having put on the breast, bless, breastplate, <laughs> I'll get it, of righteousness, and having your feet shod, covered with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of who? The wicked one, the devil. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit. Come on. Oh, the devil hates when you quote the word of God. He hates it when you quote it at him. You got to take your sword, turn it on the devil. Somebody say amen. Doesn't matter what he's trying to do. Just turn it on him. Cut him. Cuts both ways, by the way. It's a two-edged sword. (laughs) Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Pray in the Holy Ghost. If you're not praying in the Spirit yet, you haven't fully developed that gift of God, get it. Come on. Go for it. Shake yourself. Hallelujah. I'm just, you know what I mean. And get get that thing. It's powerful. Being watchful to this end with all perseverance, supplication for the saints and for me, that utterance may be given to me. And Paul goes on and on. Now, winning the spiritual war is what Jesus has called us to do. Somebody say amen. You win the spiritual war, you win. Somebody say amen. If you're struggling in it, mm, it's, it's getting tougher. But you learn to win it. And you learn to win it by having done all to do what? Stand. I'm not moving, devil. I am not moving. You're moving. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, you got to yell at the devil sometimes. Somebody, somebody say amen. So why is this spiritual? Why, are, why winning is the, is the only option for us? Because of the end time harvest. Why? Because of the end time harvest of souls, sons and daughters. Now, let me use the board real quick. So this is what we call the three glory realms. The three glory realms is very simple. Let me, let me put that up here. And this is very, very simple to understand. So I'm going to draw a circle here. All right. It's just, and this is the earth. This is the terrestrial. From here, this is a crude drawing, but it's still easy to understand. This is the celestial. This is the cosmos. This is the atmosphere, the universe, whatever we want to call it. And then this is the eternal or the spiritual realm. And this is just for our, you know, this is the eternal spiritual realm. And, and, and this is the Lord's throne here. And this is where we are reigning and ruling with Christ. We are here on the earth, and we are reigning here. All at the same time. Somebody say amen. amen. And what's happening right now in the earth, is that there are, there are battles. I'll just put this here. There are battles in the terrestrial. There are fallen spirits. I mean, no, that demon spirits have been cast out. The devil has been cast down. And let's just say down here under the earth is hell and all that, so, so you understand. But these demon spirits and the devil have been sent. They are sent into the nations. They are sent. There are angels and principalities sent from the throne of God. And the Lord has us here in the earth battling these principalities and powers. And if we don't know what we're doing, we're going to get eaten alive. Churches fail. Uh, pastors fail. Uh, churches divide. They go away. They, they lose their ground that they've gained. And the next thing you know, demon spirits have done their job and they have defeated the church. But there is the spiritual realm. Everybody say the spiritual realm. There is the terrestrial realm, uh, the spiritual realm, the celestial realm, 
and the terrestrial. So this is the spiritual realm. This is the eternal realm here. This is the celestial realm here, here and this is the earth. This is, so Jesus, what did he do? He came from here. Somebody say amen. amen. Woo, all the way here. And was born as a baby yes. in a manger. And he grew up and became a man. And he took on death, hell, and the grave, and all of our sicknesses and all of our sin. And he conquered it. He, the Bible says he descended into the lower parts and he was raised again. And then he ascended back. Somebody shout amen. Oh, hallelujah. Far above principalities and powers. Every name that is named. And the Bible says that we who believe in Jesus have been raised together and we are seated with him. Ephesians chapter 2, in heavenly places. Does that make sense? You're looking at me like I'm a deer, you're deer in headlights. All right. And so, no, I know you get it. And so here's the nations, these precious people that don't know Jesus. We have been given, let's just, let's just kind of draw the United States here somewhere, you know, whatever it looks like. And, you know, and then there's Central America and over here, you know, there's Europe and Middle East and over, you know, you know what I'm saying. These people. And so the Lord gives us a commission to go into these and he gives us all the authority that we need to remove principalities that, that deceive, destroy and kill people. False religions, cast them down. What did Paul do when he went into Athens? I mean, he's preaching at Mars Hill. They, I mean, this guy's bringing us forth some strange doctrine. And the next thing you know, what does he do? He says, well, let me, let, me, let me teach you about the unknown God. Let me show you who he is. Let me demonstrate who he is. And people are getting saved. And, and at one point at Ephesus, they, they became so uh, angry at, at the gospel that they, there was a convocation of thousands, tens of thousands of people crying, great is the goddess Diana, all of that. And, you know, how many understand that, that God's people disturb principalities and powers? You wonder why it's a little difficult to serve God when you start serving him? The devil knows, he, 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 in other words, he's watching you. <laughs> the devil knows. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and he he wants he wants to he wants to discourage you. But this is how right here this battle right here, and God is sending forth His angels. How many know we have more angels than there are demons, spirits, and principalities and power? Remember Elijah? Was it Elijah or Elisha who said, "Open the servant's eyes, Lord. Let him see that there are more that are with us than that be with them." Somebody say, "Amen." So you can be one person and go into the darkest nation on earth and bring the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ and principalities and powers will be defeated. Somebody say amen. You can build the Lord's kingdom. You can build it. This is the church age. This is what we are doing. This is who we are. This is how it gets done. You have to understand spiritual warfare. I had never planted a church, but I knew the devil certainly didn't want me to. And so I knew I had to contend. I remember one of the biggest spiritual battles. I had a manifestation that hit me. I had never had a reaction to, uh, like, when I'm out in the yard working hard, and, you know, I might want to, like, take a leave because my muscles are sore. I'm going to close right now. Come on up here, Dave. And so I had taken a leave before, and one day I, and we're planting the church, and I'm trying to do landscaping, and I'm just tired. I'm just wore out. And this leave, I had an allergic reaction, and my throat started closing up, and I could barely breathe. And I said, honey, I think something's wrong. She said, what's wrong? I said, I can't breathe. I can't hardly breathe. And I, I said, I, she said, what happened? I said, I just took this leave. And so she started praying in the Holy Ghost, praying over me, calling, you know, calling people, and and you know, God broke it off. Somebody say amen. But the devil, the devil doesn't want us to be successful. And we have to learn that everything that, that attempts to 
stop you from being victorious and doing what God calls you to do is an attempt of the enemy to destroy you. I want you to stand with me right now. The Bible says that we are to go into all the world. He has given to us this battle. And we win. We've already won. Jesus said it is finished. You just have to be enforcing it. Paul literally said it at Ephesus. He said in 1 Corinthians 15, 32, he says, I have fought with beasts at Ephesus. I mean, I'm like, oh. And so no matter what you're facing, when you understand that Jesus gives you the, all the authority that you need, to win every battle. And I wish, I, I want the church to understand this too. And I believe the Lord is raising up information, revelation on this fact that we have to do multi level, multi dimensional warfare. Just not linear, but multi layered, multi dimensional. Close your eyes right now. Father, I release revelation now, now, now concerning spiritual warfare. Lord, thank you that the enemy is already defeated. And when we speak, like your disciples went out and you said, go forth, preach the gospel, cast out devils, heal the sick. Lord, that those demons, those things had to flee. The darkness had to leave. And they came back rejoicing. Thank you, Father. So in this church age, help us to be faithful. Lord, I believe in America you are raising up a mighty church, a remnant church, but a mighty church. Lord, there's so many that are failing. So many have failed on biblical morality. So many that have failed in so many ways. You're still working with some of them, Lord, and I thank you for that. But Lord, we don't want to be one of those churches that just allow false doctrine and, and, and see the things that these churches saw because of their compromise. I remember the warfare that we were doing. Alfred and Evelyn, you were here. We were doing such warfare uh, back for our nation uh, several years ago. I think it was when uh, Hillary and, and, and uh, Trump were going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. And we were just doing warfare. God, just crush the principalities and powers. We were speaking to them. And a young woman came in, young girl came in with her parents, and she said that she saw angels just shredding. Just, and she was like this. Her eyes were wide. And she just saw, as we were praying, angels shredding demonic spirits, just, just shredding them to pieces because God was doing something in our nation to help us see what we needed to see, and we see it. But, Father, I thank you that that you are working and moving in powerful ways, powerful, powerful ways for our nation, for our families, for the people of God here. Amen. And everyone said amen. I want to do a little concluding thought, and then we'll close in declaration. This is the church age. And we must serve and advance the kingdom of God right now lift our spiritual eyes and see him for who he is casting out demons wherever they oppose being bold and faithful witnesses to our families our spouses our friends to our neighbors and become empowered and courageous believers i want you to make this declaration heavenly father thank you for the revelation of jesus thank you for the revelation of the church age. Thank you that I'm living in it right now. And I'm a part of your church and this church that is doing spiritual warfare and seeing the kingdom of God come. Thank you for eyes to see, ears that hear, a heart that receives from heaven embolden my prayers my declaration my witness 
my faithfulness and my patience. And help me to build your church, establish your kingdom, and displace the kingdom of darkness. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. And everyone said, amen. Come on, give the Lord praise right now. Hallelujah.